uh, when we are learning a tune or mapping a tune in one position like the way we are dealing here with Stella the first thing to learn is the melody harmonically the tune is Stella because as we we talked in previous lessons it's it's very important that you see harmonically what's around the lines or the other way around there are two examples for each chord Maybe I'm gonna play a little different here and give you more examples that is in, in the PDF, but anyway, this, uh, we're gonna keep everything in, in this range of six frets, this area of the guitar. So we're gonna play the Stella only in this place, as we saw, as you saw in the introduction. I played around this, exactly around uh, these shapes that I'm gonna show now. So, E minor seven flat five, or C minor, F7, F minor 7, B7, B flat 7, E flat major 7th, now I just played the A flat seventh I forgot to mention and go back to B flat major seventh and then again the two five in D B flat minor seventh and E flat nine F major again Seven and, and now A minor seven flat five D seven G seven C minor everything here for all those here for the A flat seven and we go back to B flat major seventh, and then to five of D, to five of C minor, and finally let's go on to some soloing ideas on this. Now this is a very challenging song to solo on and one of the reasons is because of the very first chord which is an E minor 7 flat 5 uh, which is a chord that nobody can figure out how to play of like I never could figure out how to play it um, students that I've had over the years at three or four major universities and private ones and really good players from Europe and clinics in Japan and everything. Nobody's ever been able to figure out how to play this chord. So, uh, how do you play it? 
Well, the clue of it is in looking at the voicing itself. There's one clue. So this chord is this is your E minor seven flat five voicing, or this, or another one might be, or maybe. Hmm. Now, if you look at any of those, what, what? Let's look at this one. Now, I've got an E here, that's the bass note, but then these other notes are B flat, D, and G. B flat, D, and G. Then if I do this voicing, D, G, B flat. How about this one, the one that I used in the chord solo? That's, that's an E down here, but then it's a G, B flat, D. It's a G minor triad. So this chord is a G minor with a, uh, with, a, with, a with an E in the bass. So now if I were to play G minor, I would really know how to, how to play on that. I could play G minor. Like a G Dorian or a G melodic minor, I could play that all all day long. But if I play E half diminished, E minor seven flat five, that messes my mind up. I'm like, wow, what the hell? It's a Locrian sharp second. I'm thinking about it, and by the time I, I think so much, the song is over with. But the, this is a trick of the mind, because a G minor 7, G minor 6, G minor major 7, and an E minor 7 flat 5 are exactly the same thing. Exactly the same. As a matter of fact, there's a great teacher in New York, great jazz teacher named Barry Harris, was one of the greatest bebop pianists in the world. He's still alive. He's like 90-something years old. And he says there is no such thing as a minor 7 flat 5 chord or half diminished chord. That it's only a minor 6 chord in inversion. So, uh, so you can, uh, so basically when I, now when I'm thinking of the E minor 7 flat 5, Instead of thinking of this very difficult thing like, okay, now it's a minor 7 with a flat 5, or it's a half diminished, now let's see that, how do I diminish my half? And instead of thinking of that, I'm just thinking of it as a G minor. So, and here's one good thing to do again on this G minor, is my old G minor tetrachord, my G Dorian tetrachord which if you haven't gone and back to my tetrachord workshop, go back and download that too so I get some more money. But anyway, here we got, see, here's my E half diminished. Just playing my E uh, G Dorian runs. Or, or also G... G melodic minor runs. G melodic minor makes make now that makes the chord your super hip uh, Locrian natural second melodic minor style uh, half diminished chord. So when you see this, it's just G minor. Any variation on G Dorian G melodic minor, anything like that. Now. When we go to the A7 flat 9, now that is a B flat melodic minor. So we got our B flat minor. So we can just go G minor, um, B flat minor, and then to C minor. C minor seven. Let's do that. Here's my loop. Here we go. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. 
Let's, let's try it again. Okay. See, I'm just taking the same thing and moving it up, right? Now, the A7 flat 9 is an altered chord. There's lots of different scale choices for that. Um, you know, another variation for this could just be saying that the E minor 7 flat 5 to A7 flat 9 is a 2 5 in D harmonic minor. D harmonic minor. Let's listen to that. Right? Do it again. D harmonic minor. Now, and that makes it easy too. Now, D harmonic minor, the four chord in D harmonic monic minor is a G minor. So there you got your G minor again. And now let's, let's look at look at the notes of of the of the the uh, D harmonic minor in relationship to the A7. You got your natural, you got your flat nine, and you got your sharp five, flat thirteen. But the whole thing, the whole scale is almost like a D aeolian which is, again, just like your G Dorian. It's the same thing. Diatonic notes from F. Now, it's one note different from the D Aeolian. So, so now what I'm saying is if you play this, this first change, like the E half diminished, we know that's E minor 7 flat 5. We know that's G minor. <laughs> G Dorian, and then the next one that belongs to D harmonic minor, which has got a G minor in it too. So you could just play G minor for the first two chords and almost get most of the notes you need. So now, what does that do to that first four bars of the song? It just makes it G minor to C minor. So this is G minor. <laughs> Mostly that's G minor, and then this is C minor. Ah, sorry. Right? So I'm just playing G Dorian to C Dorian. Let's see what that sounds like. Here we go. Sounds fine, right? Let's hear it again. Here we go. So it's just it's just two minor, it's just G minor to C minor. That's what, what you can think and you'll get by with it fine. Here we go. On Stella. Uh, and I, what I'm gonna do is I'm not I'm not gonna try to play a solo like I did the other time. I'm gonna just try to comp a little bit like this. So I might go.
more uh, information about this particular thing that I'm doing here, um, one of the very first classes I did uh, was um, called "How to Solo," <laughs> "How to Comp and Solo at the Same Time," or "How to How to Solo with Comping Underneath," and it was specifically a Lenny Bro class. So um, I think actually um, it was it's, it was probably my first class for for Mike um, that we have archived, anyways. Um, I did a couple more. Um, and we were sort of in the testing stages, but um, yeah. So check that out if you're if you're interested in further in, in um, the kind of stuff I was just doing right there. Uh, Basically, the whole idea is to create melodies w with the top note. Now, a lot of people consider chords, especially when they come from sort of a, a rudimentary background or a, you know a rhythm guitar background. Everyone's concerned with the lowest note. Well. You know, it's a G chord. Oh, I, I, I immediately go to the low G and then I build a G7 on top of that. For me, it's the opposite. It's the highest note that's important. That's the melody note. So you have to be very careful that you're not clashing uh, melodically with the melody or whoever's playing the melody. For example, um, if, if you're playing a G7 with a flat 9, but the melody is a G, you know, um, you got a problem. That's going to sound terrible. And the soloist is going to turn around and be very uh, angry that you did that. Also, uh, be aware that you know G major seven. If the melody is a, is a major is the major seven, you don't want to play this voicing with the G because it's going to clash. I mean, maybe you like that, but most horn players or singers are not going to like that. It's certainly going to uh, interfere with a singer, um, their tuning and and. Uh, it's going to obscure the melody, so be careful of that. Usually, if the singer is singing a melody, um, and I know that it, you know it, it's root or major seventh, I, I would probably try to play, you know, the fifth on the top to stay away from them. Uh, if it, I know it's the major seventh, like you know, on a clear day, uh, I might, I could probably get away with playing the nine. It's a, although the melody is the nine and the major seventh. So. Diminished chord, maybe. Um, okay, um, we're going to take Stella by Starlight and uh, do the same kind of melodic comping idea. So again, we have to imagine there's a bass player, so I'm trying to stay out of their register, so you know, no low notes. Um, I, I don't want to say no roots in the low end, because that's not necessarily true, but um, certainly try to stay out of the low, low register. Um, uh, try to familiarize yourself with the chord changes of this song. I mean, I'll, I'll you know, kind of discuss it, but um, there's way more meaning if you actually know what the chords are. Um, and they're interesting chords, so they offer some interesting uh, choices and, and melodic possibilities for comping. You know, that first chord, um, the first the first two chords are E, e minus seven flat five to an A seven flat nine or A sus flat nine or something like. Um, that's the melody. Yeah. That's the melody note. So, like I said earlier, you either do that or stay out of the way. I, I would probably stay out of the way. That would probably be my choice. So, let's play it. Oh, one, two, three, four.
it's challenging. You're trying to create, you know, sounds. I, I mean, listen to the original recording, Bill Evans on that, and you know, do what he does. Uh, in my opinion, um, sometimes in fourth, I, I play the whole scale in fourth, Dorian scale. But I'll also use tertiary harmony, you know, chords built in thirds. Chromaticism really helps when a modal tune, you know, if, you, if that's not in the chord or in the in the key, but it helps, and it's it's the melodic context of your chord. And so what? Because uh, you don't want to be too much playing up a half step because it sounds like a bridge. So um, you just want to concentrate. Here's you know little licks in fourth. Make a triad out of this D minor. Or you just the, the two is low, lowest two notes come up a half step. And Major tries a D flat over over D minor. You know that kind of creates some interesting um, colors. Just chromatic stuff like that. some chords for you. This is, uh, I call this one, useful chord voicings. And the reason is, um, there are a lot of voicings on the guitar, well, on piano too, actually, and in any kind of uh, arranging format, but there are voicings specifically on the guitar that, that can be more than one thing. And that can be a lot of fun to explore, but you have to have a starting place, so I hope to give you a starting place with this. Um, check this out. this. Which is Stella by Starlight, great Victor Young tune. Um, but what I was doing was trying to use similar chord voicings in similar situations and also similar chord voicings in situations that were not exactly the same. So, before this gets too confusing, let's start from scratch. Let's back this up and let's take a look at it on an F blues. I'm going to start with this. Now this is a simple three note voicing. E flat, A, If I put F in the bass, 
could be F13, right? F, E flat, A, D. Some people play it like this. I'm not playing it as a bar right now. Oh, where are you? There you go. Ah! There. <laughs> yeah. Or this. Either one is good. Um, but in any case, I'm going to take the root out. Now, it's important when you're, you're exploring these things, I'm going to show you some ways to um, kind of put them together for practice so that you have something concrete to work on. But it's important to be able to do these in more than one location on the neck. Now, if I take this shape, and I'm kind of tilt my hand this way so you can really see the notes. Now, this is on the sort of a upper, well, the D, the G, and the B strings. We call it upper middle set of three. I could do the same thing on the lower middle set of three. Same notes. Of course, I could do the same thing here. It's a little muddy sounding down there. And I could do the same thing up here on the upper set of three. Now, this is going to become important when it's time to move around the neck this way. For the moment, let's, uh, let's start here. Right. So if this is uh, F13, then B flat 13 would be here. Just go up to the 6th fret, bang, there you are. Um, I could make it a little easier on the hand if I do this. F13 here. Well, I can't play the root, so you don't hear the root. Like here I can play the root, but I can do this, I guess. And so can you. All right. Um, so F13, B flat 13. F13. All right. Um, now, I'm going to stick another passing chord in there in a second, but my next part on the blues is B flat 13 again, and then back to F, then B flat. Now, most people here would play A minor 7, D7, G minor 7, C7. In fact, you can even see the shape in what I'm playing right here. A minor 7, D7, sharp 9. I take the root out. I've got my little shape here, tritone plus perfect fourth, tritone plus perfect fourth for C7, and then back to F7. Now, if I play with the roots, especially that turnaround, A minor, D, G minor, C, F13, it's very easy to hear. Now, if I take the roots out, Also, very, very useful because it doesn't get in the way of the bass player. Or if you're playing with a piano player, piano players and organ players tend to use these voicings a lot. Um, so you can be kind of safe with this when you're comping in particular. All right, let's back up again. So, F, B flat. Now I should have something else here to get me to the B flat. We'll address that in a minute. B flat. Now you're going to see something interesting here. I'm going to go back to F. There's that in the upper position now. A7, D7, G7, C7. By virtue of making all these things dominant chords, instead of having some minor seven chords in there, or half diminished, or even ninth chords, I mean, if you look at what we've got here, basically uh, this shape that we're using is functioning either as a 13 or as a seven sharp nine. Now, let's review this. F13. Well, if I put B in the bass, play uh, purple A's. Okay, so um, could also be B7 sharp 9. So we have basically two for the price of one here at this point, if I, especially if I take the root out. Tritone sub, for those of you who are into that. Um, so that means if I have, instead of A minor, 
to make an A13, which is possible. It's a three chord. One, two, three in the key of F. And then that's my sixth chord, D7. G7, I make a dominant two chord instead of a minor two chord. Instead of G minor, I make a G7. C7 sharp nine. What the, uh, without the root, it just moves down chromatically. And then back to F. So I'll put the roots in. Now let's put this in the progression so it makes some kind of sense. So F7, two, three, B flat 13. F13 again. I'll drop down here so you can really hear the root. Now B flat 13. I got the roots in all these. B flat 13. Now check it out. F13, two beats, B flat 13, two beats, A7, D7, sharp nine, G13, C7 sharp nine. Now we turn around, F7, D7, G7, C7, back to F. Now if I do that same thing without the roots, check it out. something else here, which we'll get to. B flat, two, F, two beats, B flat, A, D7, G minor, not G7, sorry, not G minor, C7 sharp nine, <laughs> such a habit. F, D, so of course you know that's very simple and just laid out in the sense so you can kind of check it out and see what's happening but if I make it more rhythmic and even just using those voicings two three four 